Hey everyone, so what's up with all of that inflammation that we get to see in some of the COVID people and not the others and what might be causing that and we're also going to talk about how that might be linked to cardiovascular problems or heart problems providing potential greater risk predisposition for COVID-19 negative outcomes. My name is Dr. Mikola Rashek and Recently, we made a video on what type of different molecular elements might be binding to spike protein. And we mentioned one crucial one that was called toll-like receptor 4. And we're going to link this to some of the cardiovascular problems that are also observed. So one of the mysterious aspects about COVID-19 when it first emerged was that we know that COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2 virus needs to infect our cells through interaction with the ACE2 receptor. That's how it gains entry into our cells. But ACE2 receptors are not expressed at, at high levels in lungs at all. And another, another uh, surprising issue was that those who had a heart problems, they were at greater risk of developing COVID-19, i.e. respiratory disease. So what's the link between that? And that's where the toll-like receptors come in, because toll-like receptors, turns out that based on molecular computational models, toll-like receptors might bind better to spike protein even than the ACE2 receptor itself. And toll-like receptors, they are, they are present in the lung. When they are activated, they lead to inflammation. So inflammation typically is a negative word we associate with negative outcomes. And that's true. Chronic inflammation is a serious problem. But inflammation on a small scale burst is very, can be very valuable because inflammation impedes viral replication. This is why toll-like receptors when activated, amongst other things, they can, they can stimulate inflammation. But toll-like receptors, it turns out, can also lead to activation of ACE2 receptor. And this is why it's believed that, that um, even though lungs might have low, low amount of ACE2 receptors, if toll-like receptors are engaged, they can lead to more production of ACE2 receptor, hence promoting infection that way. However, toll-like receptors are also heavily expressed in some of the, in, throughout the body, and some of the heart cells can, can also express these at high levels. And this is where you might link inflammation of the heart to the presence of the spike protein because of that because of that connection now so toll like receptors are very important key molecules in promoting the severity of the disease even though normally they are supposed to help our bodies fight infections it's part of innate immune system so also in uh, in the lungs in the cells that actually express toll-like receptors, the same cells that also express ACE2, those are the cells in alveoli, those tiny little balls of pocket that we breathe into when we breathe into our lungs. And this is where the gas can enter the bloodstream. And the cells in that area, they are coated with this specific substance that are called surfactants, they're there to maintain the structure of those of of those alveoli as well as help with the gas exchange between what we breathe in and the oxygen that is then distributed throughout the body with by the blood and what happens is those surfactants can actually coat to, coat the toll like receptors and prevent their interaction with the with the spike protein. So when infection happens, it helps to remove those surfactants and then situation can get 
possibly aggravated because suddenly we have toll-like receptors available for interaction with the spike protein. In addition, so because I mentioned that toll-like receptors are there as part of innate immune immunity system, normally these receptors in recognize specific patterns observed on top of pathogens. And probably the most famous example of, of a pathogenic structure that activates toll-like receptors are lipopolysaccharides that are found on, on certain bacteria. And what's also interesting is that spike protein itself might also bind to these compounds, lipopolysaccharides, and, and uh, potentially enhance the inter... <laughs> potentially enhance there's a person in a tree <laughs> but potentially and enhance the interaction with the toll-like receptors so spike protein not only can it bind toll-like receptors directly it could also use bacterial co-infection to enhance that binding and therefore increase the severity of the disease and the reason why I bring all of this up is because interestingly it shows you how cardiovascular issues can be linked to the severity of COVID-19 through and other issues other tissues can also can also be targeted if they have these toll like receptors potentially kidneys is another example and the reason why I mention is because toll like receptors they are known they, they are in a complex with other another molecule other protein MD2. MD2 cre gives a toll-like receptor specific structure and there is compounds known that can interact with MD2 to actually prevent the toll-like receptor activation by, by the pathogenic fragments. And that compound is called naltrexone. But what's interesting about naltrexone is that this chemical compound can exist in a form of like two different conformations or basically two different mirror images of each other and only one of them would work on inhibition of toll-like receptors not the, not the other so this is uh, an interesting unusual um, concept about chemical chemical ability to interact with with proteins so that's a compound that might be worthwhile investigating because every single time we, any of us becomes infected, we might have to deal with the complications of, of uh, inappropriate activation of our immune system and aggravation of, in, of that inflammation process. And that's potentially one of the ways that we might be looking at in the future of how this might need to be treated or prevented, including the side effects that are that are seen in some individuals that are simply more likely or more predisposed to experience experience that. So that's uh, this is the story I wanted to tell you ab about this uh, interesting interaction between spike protein and other compounds in our body, other molecules, and how all of this can be intricately intertwined with an entire body and why deep understanding of molecular biology is so essential whenever we are thinking of any type of intervention. So this is a perfect example. All right, if you made it to, to this point, I wanted to let you know we have another COVID Q&A event coming up. Those are a lot of fun. Basically, this is where the audience can ask questions and we answer these if you want free tickets to these let us know and we'll subscribe to to our newsletter first top 10 people who subscribe will send you free tickets and we have another event coming up as well and this is uh, for business owners where we offer a package for their employees which is called proactive wellness package and I get together with two other experts and we talk about financial well-being mental health well-being and I talk about health healthy living well-being with the concept of 
using DNA mapping and we teach different strategies to basically ensure that people can feel as comfortable and prepared to live as meaningful life as, as um, we all can manage to. Of course, there are many ways to achieve that, right? All right, so if you're interested in that, the link to the subscription to that event is in the description below. So, uh, and I uh, also wanted to say, if you like this content, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. Thank you to everyone who have donated as well through Super Thanks. We appreciate that big time. That's great. Helps the channel as well. And we look forward to seeing you next time and sharing more interesting content with you. Bye, everyone.